Good morning students. Welcome to the second year of civil engineering. I am uh, Vanessa Fernandez and I will be taking the subject planning and functional design of buildings. So it is a three credit course. Okay, So coming to the course objectives, uh, we need to understand the principles of building planning, importance of bylaws in construction, what is the concept of energy efficient buildings, then will be we need to understand what you mean by acoustical design concepts and noise control techniques also understand the concept of natural and artificial lighting designs then principles of uh, climatic condi condition cl climatic design of buildings with emphasis on tropical climate we also need to understand therm thermophysical properties of building materials and design of shading devices so these are the course objective of the subject. Coming to the syllabus, so we need to, uh, uh, as a, in introduction, we need to understand um, what is building planning, what what are bylaws, very very important rules. Okay, these are the rules which we need to follow in the construction. What do you mean by conceptual and functional planning? What do you mean by introduction? What do you mean by energy efficient buildings? So introduction to energy efficient buildings will be studying. Coming to the next subtopic is on acoustics. So in acoustics, we'll be studying physics of sound, behavior of sound, sound insulation, reverberation control. Next topic is on lighting. Under lighting, we'll be studying different principles of lighting, such as daylighting and artificial lighting. Okay, the various design methods. Then next topic is on thermal design of buildings. In thermal design of buildings, the climatic elements classification. Okay, thermal comfort and indices, solar radiations, okay, various calculations and design of shading devices. Next is thermophysical properties of building materials and thermal control. Okay, passive and active building design. Next is steady and periodic heat flow through building envelope. And finally, the concept of green buildings. Okay, so these are the references, various references listed here. So I will suggest to you all references which you, you all need to refer for the subject first one is the mg shah book okay mg shah mg shah cm kale and sy Patki building drawing tata magro hill publication next is uh, m david egan architectural acoustics okay rose public publishing 2007 then national building code 2016 need to refer this bureau of indian standards okay so coming to introduction so we need to know the concept of planning very very important what is the concept of planning what is planning all about so planning is based on a theory of thinking before acting okay so planning is an integral part of our life so we all make plans in each and every step of life so planning is the most basic and primary function of management it is the pre-decided outline okay of activities to be conducted in the organization so planning is a process okay of deciding when where okay and how to do a certain activity before the start of the work so it is an intellectual process which needs a lot of thinking before the formation of plans so all other functions okay of management is useless if there is uh, not a proper planning system in an organization and so while planning any type of building okay be it uh, residential building or industri industrial building okay an architect or an engineer has to pay attention to various considerations such as the owner's requirements so what is the owner's requirements he has to jot it down on the paper then characteristics of the building site okay, he has to know he has to know that what is the characteristic of the building site then various rules and regulations okay and various and, and bylaws very very important is the bylaws these are the rules okay which are, which is prepared by various authorities so we need to strictly follow this bylaws in construction so all this information is collected carefully checked okay and then drawings are prepared based on the above consideration so what do you mean by planning a building what's the definition of planning so it is arrangement of 
all units of buildings on all the floors okay which will take into consideration the height and level to accommodate the spaces which are enclosed by walls floors and the roofs next is the approach to planning so when you start okay when you start to plan a building what considerations you will take into mind so there are different stages here first one is a design for safety so under this design for safety uh, we have structural safety we have health safety we have fire safety we have constructional safety okay now the important decisions which are related to the structural design they are taken by studying the site data and uh, holding discussions with architects consultants okay clients okay with reference to the site investigation report uh, site contours and features okay soil and its bearing capacity so what do you mean by bearing capacity it's a capacity of the soil to withstand the load which is applied to the ground okay then uh, foundation problems the structures then building acts and regulations for the structural design and safety so all this uh, comes in design for structural safety then coming to health safety a uh, portable water supply garbage removal system okay drainage system provision to avoid contamination stagnation of water so all this we need to uh, keep in mind in, while well, in health safety then comes a uh, fire safety like fire resistant construction uh, provision of fire detectors okay fire safety plan okay all this we need to consider then coming to constructional safety now safety during construction work and foundation work below the ground level then anti termite treatment okay anti termite treatment for the soil and foundation testing and approval of materials then testing of the concrete cubes like we also have a lab for this like material in material testing lab will be study will be studying uh, the testing of the concrete cubes like how to test the quality of the concrete cubes by using universal testing machine okay we will be studying a uh, compression test on concrete okay that is a lab test which will be conducting in the material testing lab so safety of workers and first aid next uh, coming to the stage 2a that is design for comforts to achieve liveability so a uh, design for liveability with minimum use of okay electrical energy for ventilation air conditioning a uh, provision of openings to admit uh, maximum uh, daylight okay to avoid uh, glare and for ventilation then selection of suitable materials to achieve thermal uh, comfort okay so design for this liveability is done uh, uh, is done for the design for thermal comfort okay then design for ventil ventilation comfort design for air conditioning design for lighting design for noise and acoustics okay uh, desi design for protection against uh, uh, moisture okay and design for building services uh, next uh, coming to design of in, in, in coming to interior designing okay so uh, liveability is finally achieved through the interior designing uh, in interior designers work okay which will decide the color texture then uh, pattern for flooring ceiling or uh, wall surface okay and all visible objects such as equipments like electrical fans fittings okay then uh, stage to see landscaping and indoor plants so landscaping and indoor plants for achieving utility in the total uh, design and giving its aesthetic pleasure all is done by this landscape architect after this uh, stage we have the final check by the architect so the architect will check the uh, drawings and he will execute it for the construction next uh, we have uh, the different stages in construction process or the, and the role of different agencies okay we have different agencies in construction so first one is the role of the coordinator okay so the owner and builder he will perform the role of the coordinator okay the architect okay architect will become his representative so in case the owner uh, the builder okay he will not have any technical background 
uh, yet he has to perform the functions with the help with the with the uh, has to perform the functions with the cop with the cooperation of various experts okay like consultants and specialists so satisfaction of the client with efficient planning and completion of the project uh, within minimum time without affecting the quality should be the main aim of uh, of the promoter and the uh, and the builder okay then comes the role of the legal consultant now a legal consultant he is useful for verifying the title of the land uh, with further processing of this sale deed and registration so hence both the promoter and the owner of the land should take the help of common uh, or ex an experienced lawyers known as they are known as the legal consultants to look after all the legal matters the legal advice relates to uh, transactions uh, such as purchase of land okay sale deed registration of sale deed okay all this he needs to take into consideration okay this is the role of the legal consultant next is the role of the architect so uh, the architect uh, he will take into consideration the owner's requirements he will make a list of them he will visit the site and he will prepare the preliminary plans and estimates so the scheme prepared by the architect is presented to the client by preparing the uh, drawings okay and other documents such as the layout plan and the perspective plan okay next is the uh, mo uh, model of the model of the scheme or the buildings okay then brochures okay brochure showing uh, details like plan perspective uh, pers layout the, the site plan specifications okay uh, the names of the consultants and, uh, and other details then uh, uh, he will also have submission drawings for submit for submitting the scheme to the plan sanctioning authority okay then working drawings and the architectural drawings then drawings and details from the structural engineer so structural engineer drawings and details then landscaping okay landscaping drawings then record drawings after the completion of the project to be handed over to the society or association for future references okay so all this uh, things architect will take into consideration okay next is the role of a planning engineer so what is this planning engineer's role so the role of planning engineer is mainly to support the project manager and the project team with the information to execute the project in time and within the budget allotted so preparation of the project schedule covering entire scope and within defined timelines like calculating the optimal uh, material require require required then uh, manpower requirement and machinery then plan for the budget required for the project to monitor the expenses then coordinate with various departments of engineering like who will provide the working drawings okay procurements like who will buy the materials then who will check the quality then then he will co uh, collect the periodic updates and he will prepare a daily weekly and monthly updates of the project then finally he will create the project closing report so it's the role of the planning engineer next uh, coming to stages at construction process okay, i will just uh, write it here and show it to you all the flow chart i will draw okay so first one as i told you is the owner okay the owner he will appoint the architect so appointment of architect okay after appointment of architect he will appoint structural engineers okay then estimates and tender documents will be prepared okay then contractor will be appointed okay so appointment of contractor
okay then work will commence so commencement of work okay then periodical supervision of payments to the contractor so payments of bills to contractor okay payments of bills to the contractor to the uh, structural engineers specialists etc then completion certificate okay certificate of completion then after the work is done okay so certificate of completion after the work is done work will after payment of bills work will get completed then completion certificate then finally final will bill will be prepared final bill okay so after the payment of bills okay payment of bills work is completed after the completion of work completion certificate will be issued and after that final bill will be prepared so here okay after appointment of the architect architect will sketch plans okay he will prepare what presentation drawings okay then he will take very important approval of the owner okay so then after uh, presentation drawings he will prepare submission drawings submission drawings okay he will take approval of the sanctioning authority such as municipality municipal co uh, corporation town planning authority so after that he will prepare working and detailed drawings okay working and detailed drawings by the architects structural drawings by the structural engineers okay then supervision by architect structural engineers will be done okay supervision by architect structural engineers okay so when this is done okay this will be like this supervision by architects and structural engineers then only the final bill can uh, then only payment of bill can be processed okay then completion certificate by architect and plan sanctioning authority okay okay so this is a flow chart showing the stages in construction okay so as i told you there is a owner okay he will appoint architect okay then structural engineers will be appointed okay then estimates and tender documents will be prepared okay different estimates of the project okay what is the project cost 
cost the project so that will all include in estimates okay what is what what are different works to be done okay under the project so that that is that will come in estimates and tender documents then approval of the then appointment of the contractor okay contractor will be appointed then work will commence commencement of work will be there then as i told you periodical uh, supervision payment of bills to the contractor structural engineer okay will be done so payment of bills then the work will be completed so completion of work will be there then certificate will be issued of completion that is a certificate of completion and final bills will be prepared so uh, once the um, architect is appointed architect has to sketch plans okay he has to prepare first of all uh, presentation drawings okay he has to prepare ppt okay on what he what what he is going to execute so what all the drawings details he has to prepare in his presentation drawings so after presentation drawings he has to prepare the submission drawings it is a general layout of the drawings then in more details like what is the um, so working drawings okay in 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 working drawings he has to show all the details in in the, in the drawings like okay all the uh, sizes of the doors size of the rooms all that he will be showing in working and detailed drawings then uh, supervision by architects should be done uh, supervision by architects and structural engineers okay on the site whatever work is going on the architect and the structural engineer should supervise the site okay whether the quality is maintained okay whether they are putting uh, proper steel okay st rcc uh so they are putting a required number of steel bars so all that structural engineer will look into so when he does all this work then only the payment of bills can be done okay so then completion certificate by the architect and the plan sanctioning authority finally completion certificate by the architect okay will be given and plan sanctioning authority so these are the various stages okay stages in construction process okay coming to uh, various factors okay uh, what factors while selecting a site uh, what factors uh, we need to consider so there are various factors which one needs to consider such as uh, physical factors health consideration community facilities transport facilities and economy so coming to physical consideration uh, the land okay the land uh, and its surroundings should be fit for residential purposes like a peaceful environment should be there okay peaceful environment and good landscape okay peaceful environment and good landscape and uh, unobstructed flow of natural air now coming to soil conditions okay in uh, coming to soil conditions the cost of foundation depends upon the uh, its strata and the bearing capacity so bearing capacity is the capacity of the soil to support the load which is applied to the ground uh generally hard modem is ideal so it is necessary uh, to test the bearing capacity of the soil and then low lying areas like uh, marshy a uh, marshy uh, areas and lands located near rivers uh, reclaimed lands are not suitable okay so the water table uh, water table level should not be too high and too low okay a high water table will create a permanent dampness okay and a very low water table will mean drawing water from wells and by pumps and the second is health consideration a uh, land uh, uh, near industrial areas will prove to be unhealthy because of noise and air pollution okay uh, a, a, a good sewerage and efficient water supply are desirable in order to uh, to avoid trouble from flies and mosquitoes okay coming to this community facilities so community facilities include uh, primary and secondary schools then primary health centers post offices okay shopping centers then places of recreation uh, public gardens playgrounds so all this comes in community facilities then transportation facilities like uh, proximity to proximity to the uh, bus stands and railway stations so we need to select a site okay which is very near to the bus stand we cannot select a uh, uh, we usually don't want no a, a site or a house or to be located very far from the bus stand so while 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 deciding okay we need to see look into this consideration so one this factor like proximity to the bus stand and railway station like a good approach roads from the main road okay up to the colony then also proximity to the place of work and cheapest uh, means of transportation to the same then coming to the economy 
the now the total uh, cost of the land includes the cost of the land and the cost of the development okay so it is necessary to ascertain the same in the beginning along with the clear ownership rights of the land so these are the various factors which one will look into while selecting the site okay now coming to very important uh, sub topic that is principles of planning so we'll look what are the various principles of planning so here are various uh, principles you can see here uh, first one is the aspect then uh, prospect uh, privacy circulation ruminous grouping elegance sanitation flexibility economy and practical consideration so coming to the we'll, we'll see all of this in more in more detail so we'll coming to the first one that is the uh, aspect we'll see in the next slide what is this aspect all about so aspect means the peculiarity of the arrangement of uh, doors and windows to the external wall of a building which allows uh, the occupant to enjoy the uh, natural gifts such as sunshine and breeze okay now a good aspect is desirable as it provides for comfortable conditions and cheerful atmosphere due to proper sunshine and breeze okay it also gives better hygiene condition as the sun rays are potential destroyers of the organic poisons okay it provides the external appearance of the building due to proper location of doors and uh, windows so in the aspect in the aspect a uh, consideration should be given to the placement of different rooms of the house in accordance with our activities in the house during day and night okay uh, a room which receives uh, light and air from a particular direction is said to have aspect of that direction okay so thus in planning the desired aspect for various rooms uh, are given as follows in the next slide you can see here for the kitchen it will have an eastern uh, aspect in the morning sun refreshes and purifies the air and remains cool in the afternoon okay and then uh, in the living room it will have a south uh, east aspect aspect the sun towards south in wind is towards the south the sun is towards the south in the winter and hence the uh, living room remains warm okay the sun is towards the north overhead or at higher altitude towards the south in summer and this saves the living room uh, with the southern aspect from getting unduly hot then comes the bedroom it will have a west or southwest aspects okay then uh, Okay, the next one is the dining room. It will have a, a south aspect. Okay, next veranda will have a west or southwest aspect. Next, coming to prospect. Okay, a prospect means the view one can get when one looks through the doors and windows in the external uh, walls. So, it will it will create a good impression on a person who views it from the outside. so a building is said to have a good prospect when it presents a good and pleasing appearance when it is seen from the outside so we can do this by uh, by giving small projections okay or a bay windows can be provided okay and it can give a good outlook okay to the building you can see here this is a picture showing a very nice prospect of a bungalow okay this is also a picture showing good prospect okay the location of see the doors doors the shape of the doors okay very nicely done okay coming to privacy it is one of the important principles while planning a residential building so we have two kinds of privacies we have the ex, uh, external privacy and internal privacy so the privacy from the sides can be secured by providing planned entrance and paths so we can all, we can do this by screening the front and the rear entrances now internal privacy uh, can be easily obtained by proper planning of different areas and by location of doors and windows now the shutters uh, when open should give minimum view of the room for entering the persons then uh, circulation circulation as i told you is a movement within the premises and includes both the horizontal circulation and the vertical circulation so horizontal circulation it means the access to the room on the same floor it is achieved by proper provisions of passages uh, corridors halls and lobbies 
then it comes to vertical circulation it means the access to the rooms on different floors it is achieved by provision of sta stairs uh, staircases and electrical uh, lifts okay so all this is taken into consideration here then coming to ruminous ruminous means uh, uh, getting uh, maximum advantage from minimum dimensions okay okay like uh, the the shape and size of the room are also very important okay for ruminous Okay, while taking into consideration ruminous, uh, the rectangular room has more ruminous than the square room. Okay, now the shape a square room relatively appears smaller than the rectangular room of the same area. Okay, now height, uh, the smaller rooms should not be made too high because they tend to produce a cave-like uh, effect. So such rooms uh, will appear smaller uh, than the than their usual sizes. Now grouping. Coming to next principle is grouping. What do you mean by grouping? It means the arrangement of various rooms in the building, okay, for the convenience of the user. Like uh, we need to group uh, the following. Like kitchen and dining should be very close to each other. Then keep in mind the store should be adjacent to the kitchen. Then toilet block should not should be far away from the kitchen. Then kitchen and toilet block not should not be exposed to the drawing room. and bedroom should be connected to bath and less exposed to the drawing room so all this uh, factors should be taken while while, while you are drawing a plan okay while drawing see that kitchen and dining is very close to each other then again kitchen store and kitchen group it in one like store adjacent to kitchen then toilet block just keep it far away from the kitchen okay then again kitchen and toilet block should not be exposed to the living room or drawing room okay then bedroom should be connected to bath and should be less exposed to the drawing room okay ne coming to the next principle that is on elegance now what is this elegance it is the appearance of the building okay mainly owing to the elevation which in turn depends on the plan so how can it do? it will depend upon how like positioning of the doors windows balconies okay then provision uh, providing projections like sun sh sun shades okay providing uh, bay windows okay corner windows you can see here this are the bay windows what do you mean by bay window this is the projection outer projection okay you can see a space so this is called as a bay window projecting outwards this is the elegance this is the fern kadamba in goa okay very beautifully done aesthetic wise elegance very good elegance it is showing okay coming to next principle is sanitation then a uh, provision for cleanliness lighting and ventilation in sanitary units it will avoid the growth of bacteria okay and hence the diseases the spread of diseases okay so skirting should be provided in rooms okay very important coming to flexibility flexibility means that a room which is planned for one function can be used for the other okay for example the study room uh, may be planned for using guest room so study room can be used as a guest room so it is you can flexibility so that flexibility okay so flexibility can be achieved now coming to practical considerations okay uh, so after all the fundamental some practical points should be additionally considered right like uh, uh, we need we need to plan for future extension so provision for future extension without dismantling okay should be planned then large rooms okay you can shorten can be shortened by providing movable partitions but smaller rooms cannot okay be enlarged easily so the number of doors and windows should be minimum provisions for built in furniture at proper at proper places i was full from the point of view of the utility so all this uh, factors or practical considerations we should keep in mind while planning so with this practical consideration okay i come to this come to the end of this lecture okay